Booker Tov. The next track ain't Mesechas Gitin. So how may we get? Somebody brings a get from Medina's Hayam. So let's try to understand what these words mean. Rashi says, first of all, that what does Medina's Hayam mean? Literally, it means from the country of the seas. Rashi says, all, uh, all of Chutzla are its. Anything outside the land of Israel is called Medina Sayam, with the exception of Babel. So somebody brings a get from outside the land of Israel. What's a get? So Tosfos, the top Tosfos writes, even though all other contracts are also sometimes called a get, like we find later on in our tractate, and Daflam Adalad, nevertheless, nevertheless, the, the general... Uh, procedure of the Shas is to refer to a bill of divorce as a get. And so th- so that's what this is referring to, a bill of divorce. And where does the name get come from? So that itself is a question. So Shulte Giburim says it refers to a stone in the sea that pushes away other stones. It's called the Gite. Maybe it sounds a little bit like a ghetto, but the um, Vilna Gon says it's because there are, these two letters never appear next to each other in the entire Torah. Others say that the Tosos brings out a reasoning that it's because the numerical value of a get is 12, of Gimel Tes is 12, and that corresponds to the 12 lines, which is a tradition to write a get on 12 lines. Uh, another theory in Tosos is that because there are 12 lines between there are four lines between each of the books of the Torah. We're starting the book of Bamidbar, the Shabbos. There are four lines between Vayikra and Bamidbar, four lines between Shemos and Vayikra, and four lines between Bereshis and Shemos. And Tosa says we don't count Mishnah Torah because that's just a repetition. So we don't count Tefarim. So if somebody, back to our Mishnah. The Mishnah says, "I maybe get me Medina Sayam. Sarah Shayomar, but Fana Nafta, Fana Naftam. That the Shliach who brings the get, the Shliach Mavio, the Shliach who brings the get for the husband needs to say this get was written in it was written in front of me and signed in front of me. Gemara is going to bring two theories as to why he has to say that. The theory of Rabba and the theory of Rabba. We're going to we're going to see that in a moment." Rabbi Gamliel says, Rabbi Gamliel says, even if we bring it from Rechem or Cheger, and Rashi tells us that this is the translation of the place in the Torah in Bereshit that's called Kedesh Ubered, Kadesh Ubered. So even if you bring it from these places, which are closer to the land of Israel, you need to say it. Rabbi Lezer says, even if you bring it from the place that's called Kfar Udim, which is right outside the land of Israel, but it's right next to the city of Wood, that you still would have to say it. The Chachamim Omrim, the Chachamim say, under these circumstances, that the Chachamim are in the position, excuse me, I may be Medina Sayam, Ramoach. The Chachamim say that the that you don't need to say funny nachtam, funny nachtam, except for the one who brings it and from uh, from Medina Sayam and also brings it back from the land of Israel to Medina Sayam. And the Gemara is going to explain this opaque statement. There are two parts of it that are opaque. First of all, what is uh, what are the Chachamim adding? And secondly, what is this concept of Hamolech? So then the mission continues. Maybe me Medina or Medina or Medina Sayam. Someone who brings it from one province to another province overseas, meaning to say you're you're completely overseas, you're completely outside the land of Israel, but you just bring it between two out two states outside the land of Israel. You also need to say And the Rashi says that the Gemara is going to explain that this refers to one city that has two rulers. And the two rulers were very makbed. They were very careful that they people from one one rulership don't go into the other one. So even if you do that, you also have to say v'fanei nechta, v'fanei nechta. Rabbi Yehuda says me rekem with Mizrach from rekem to the east. Rekem is a border town, 
And so from that point onward, it's considered outside the land of Israel. The Rechem Kemizrach. And also may ask on to the south, the ask on Kedarum. Uh, so Ashkelon, therefore, but according to this theory, is according to this statement, is not part of the land of Israel. And may Akko itself, from the Akko Kitzaf, from Akko to the north, and Akko is also not going to be considered part of the land of Israel. Remeir says Akko carries to show like Gitin. Remeir says Akko is like the land of Israel with respect to Gitin, but and this is to the exclusion of with respect to selling of slaves that you're not allowed to sell your slaves outside the land of Israel. So Rabbi Mayer is saying, <coughs> excuse me. So Rabbi Mayer is saying that Akko is <coughs> with respect to Gitin, we're going to consider it like the land of Israel, so you don't need to recite the funny nach, the funny nach them. With respect to selling of slaves, you're not going to be allowed, uh, that you're going to be penalized for the selling of the slaves in that, under those um, circumstances. Meaning to say that Rabbi Meir will also admit with respect to slaves and the law of Akko is not like the land of Israel, because we're going to say, I'm Gimel, I'm Bays, somebody who sells a slave to Chutzar, it's the sage has penalized him and that he, the slave has to go free. So therefore, if you sell it to Akko, it's going to be that circumstance. Rabbeinu Tam asked the question, how can you say Ashkelon is not like the land of Israel, but doesn't it say in the book of Joshua, Zosar, Sam, uh, Ashkeloni? And so therefore, we see from here that Ashkelon was part of the land of Israel. Also, how can you say that Akko is not part of the land of Israel? Because we know that the Gemara Ksuvos tells us that the Amorim, when they got to Akko, they would roll on the ground and kiss the ground because they were part of the land of Israel. So, so that's why they're asking this question. So th- these are the questions. So Tosvos' answer is that it was conquered by those who went up from Egypt. So when they, when they when in time of Joshua, they went up, they conquered it, but not by those who went up from Babylon. So that's Tosus' explanation of, of how why it says Ashkelon is not part of the land of Israel. So this is this is hold on. This is a little bit difficult because how can we say that Akko wasn't conquered when they were coming up and they were rolling in the ground of the, of the land of Akko? And so therefore, so therefore it's a, it's a little bit more of a complicated question. So now the, the mission continues, and maybe get Eretz Yisrael, Eno Tzarech Shayomar, B'fanai Nechta, B'fanai Nechta, that if you bring the get in the land of Israel itself, you don't need to recite this phrase of B'fanai Nechta, B'fanai Nechta, Nem Yeshelav Orim Yisgayim B'chosma. And if you have, people who are, or if there are people who are, if the husband is challenging it and he's saying it's forged, then Yiskayim B'chosvav. What does this mean? Rashi says, Imya idua edim al chasimas yodeim. That, that the, then the witnesses are supposed to be, do what's called kiyom shtar. What does kiyom shtar mean? Kiyom shtar means we ratify the, um, the signatures on the document. How do you ratify the signatures on the document? Either the witnesses come along and testify that this was their signature, or or other witnesses will come along and, and testify that this was their signature. Then it will be kosher. But if there's nobody to challenge it, we're going to say, if there's no witnesses challenging the get that's brought, we're going to assume it's kosher. Because because we're saying that most of the people, Rashi's foreshadowing with the Gemara's explanation here is, and what's the reason why we need to say it was written and signed before me? Because we want to make sure that the get was written properly. And one of the crucial ways in which we're saying it's written properly is to say that it was written for specifically this woman. So we're going to say that because most people really know what they're doing. And also the Eid of Mitsui and Tamil Akaimo. And also in the land of Israel, people need know how to uphold their, their 
the witnesses are always there because they do a lot of business, they do a lot of court, so they know how to ratify these, these signatures. As we're about to say on Da'an Amabez that there were Bate Dinin Kavuin. Okay. So now we're up to the Gemara. The Gemara wants to know what's the reason why we say this explanation of Bafana Nechta Bafana Nechta. Why do we require that the witnesses say it was signed and sealed? It was written and signed before me. So what's the reason? So Rabbah gives the first explanation. My time, Rabbah Amar, Fisha in Bikin Lishma. Rabbah says because the people outside the land of Israel are not experts in the laws of the Gitin. They're not expert uh, in the idea that the get needs to be written for the purpose specifically of this woman. Meaning to say that the Gemara is going to tell us that the process of cost of us save for Krisus. Law Lishma needs to be written specifically for her. And a get that was not written for her is, is therefore disqualified. And so therefore, and so therefore. The, the, according to the simple, simplest way to read the Gemara, the witnesses need to come forward and say that the get was written and signed specifically for this woman. And so that's why we require it, because, overseas, because outside the land of Israel, they weren't experts in this. Tosos asked the question, Tosos asked the question, according to Rava, he says, Why do we say that, why are we only worried about this law? That it needs to be written in Shema. What about all the other laws about a get? Like, for example, that it needs to be that it can't be attached to the ground. So, so that if they wrote to get when it was attached, it's not kosher. Or that if they change the name, or, um, or that these are also concerns. Or if it was a predated get, it's also disqualified. So. So why do we say that they're not experts in these laws? So Rabbeinu Tam brings down, tells us brings down Rabbeinu Tam that the, that the people overseas actually didn't know all the laws of the Gittin, but however, specifically about the law of the Lashma, the Chacham made a Gzera because they weren't so concerned about this law because it didn't seem to them that it was the correct reading of the verse. They, they, they didn't understand why because of what means specifically Lashma, but all the other laws made sense. And so therefore, when it says in the Gemara, Ain and Bikim, meaning to say they weren't concerned about this law. That's how Tosa says. That Tosa says they knew all the laws, they just didn't, they didn't agree with that one. That the Ravid gives a different explanation. Ravid says that they were concerned only about the law of Lashma because Lashma is something that, that you're not careful about is something that's common. Because the Sofrim used to write the templates of the Gitin so that they would have it, and so that when a person come, came forward, it would be very easy to, to just fill in the details. But the other concepts of the get are not common. Uh, the Tosus Arash brings the opinion of the Riva. Riva is a German Tosafist from Speyer. He, he argues with them, and he says, no, the, they were really concerned from overseas with all the disqualifications of a get. But but really, Rabbah only mentions a Shema because that was the most common one. But really, you need to testify about all the disqualifications. And so therefore, when he says, B'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, he's really testifying that the get was written completely properly in all of its details. So those are the three explanations of why the Gemara doesn't list the other possible reasons why Rabbah doesn't list them. First of all, he's saying because the answer of Rabbeinu Tam, which was that they didn't make the same drasha from the verse that the overseas they had a question about this drasha. That the the answer of the Ravid is because that this was the most that this was very common because they had their own gitin lying around and so they wanted to sell them easily. And then the answer of the Riva, which was, it's really a concern for all of them. They just mentioned this one. So that's what Rabbi says. Rabbi comes along and says, no, Rabbi says, Lafisha ain't Eden Mitsuyo Lakaimo. Rabbi says that there's no, that you wouldn't have any witnesses to certify the, con- the get. If, that the, if the document came from overseas, they need to say it was written in front of me because otherwise there's no witnesses to certify it. What does this mean? 
Rashi says there's ain shayaros mitzuyos bishamatan. There's not as many caravans coming back and forth. So if the husband will come and challenge again and say, listen, that it, that he didn't write it, or there will be no witnesses there to certify it. And so therefore they believe the agent. And so that's what Rebbe was saying, because you need it, because otherwise how are we going to uphold the, the signatures on the contract? So my benaya, what's the difference between Rabba and Rabba? The difference between them is if two witnesses came forward. I mean, say if there are two witnesses who came forward, according to Rabba, we still need to know that the get was done properly. But according to Rabba, you don't need to certify their signatures anymore. And so therefore, we don't need him to say it. Inami mi Medina or Medina of Eretz Israel, or else if it's within the land of Israel. So within the land of Israel, we know that they're experts, but we still don't know that they're that the that these are their these two signatures in case the husband comes. Or Inami, but also Medina of Medina Sayam, or else it's within the same province in Medina Sayam, meaning to say overseas, if it's in the same area, we still need to know that it was done properly, but we are able to certify the signatures. According to Rabbo, it says the whole explanation why we need the agent to say, funny enough, funny enough, um, is because it's not experts in Lishma. So if that's the case, we should always require to. It shouldn't be enough to just come send along the agent to say it was written and signed properly before me. We should require to like we have for all testimony in the Torah. So the Gemara's answer is, Eid echa neman surin. No, we're going to believe this one witness, this agent, that it was done properly because we have this concept, one witness is believed by a prohibition. Why, why is that the case? Uh, she says, That the Torah believes every single one from the Jewish people, that they separated their truma, that they slaughtered the animal, that they remove the Gid Anasha, and that this is not forbidden fat. So, what's the reasoning? We'll see why. Amor, so, the Gemara, so therefore, if that's the case, we, that's what we don't require too. So the Gemara says, Amor, the Amrinan Eid Echa Nema Bisurin. Okay, when do we say that we believe one witness in a case of something permitted or prohibited? But when do we say that? Safik shalchelev, safik shal shuman, where it's something that's forbidden, a piece of meat, and we're not sure if it was kosher or not. That the law is chazik isura, where the prohibition had not been established. Of ohachad is chazik isura, but where the prohibition of, of an ishes ish has been established, have a sheva erva. It's something that was already prohibited. It's a sexual matter. Ain davar sheva erva pachas mishnayim, and therefore we should require two people to uproot her status as a married woman. Look at Rashi. When do we say that one witness is believed where the prohibition is not established? Where the, the prohibition is not established on this piece of meat. But but in this woman, it's been established. It's already been established as prohibited. And we don't learn out from, we can't learn out from Tevo and Shlita because there he could have made the animal kosher. And so therefore we believe the witness. But here it's a matter of a sexual matter. Uh, she says you can't, it's not appropriate to allow less than two people. As we learn it out from, from monetary matters. So the Gemara says, no, we're going to say most of the people are experts. And so therefore, we assume most of the people are experts and they do the get properly. And so therefore, since most of them do the get properly, we don't have to be concerned that it was done improperly. And so therefore, we don't need this testimony really. And even according to Rabbi Mayor, we learn in Yavamos is concerned about the minority of the case. And that's why a minor can't do Yibam or Chalitza because maybe. He's, he's not going to grow up to be an adult or, or this woman can't be a minor for even Machalitza because she, maybe she is not going to grow up to be an adult, uh, to be somebody who's an uh, actual woman. We don't know their status. Well, they're still a minor. And so therefore, if that's the case, 
we should maybe be concerned that it's not being done properly, that the get wasn't done properly. He would say, Stam Sofri the Daini Migmargamiri. We say most scribes, Sofri Adayanim, are experts in the law. And, and so therefore they know this law, the get isha is something that's a requirement to be done with Shema. So most of the scribes are experts. And so therefore, and so therefore there, we're not, we're really, we really don't need it. The rabbis just require them to say this uh, out of the concern why do the rabbis require it? Rashi says, the rabbis are just concerned because Mishum the Ika, the Eshgach, Kasa the Omeid, Kigon Shinichta Vashem Echamib Ne, Iro, Shishmo, Kishmo, Vishma, Kishma, and Imach Mil Garish, because the rabbis are concerned about the minority possibility, the smaller possibility that maybe we're going to, he's going to find a get somewhere in the, in the, in the street. And it was written for a different woman with the, who has the same name as his wife, and he has the same name, and I've just come to use it. And so therefore, the Rabbanon required it. In this case, because we, we were concerned that if we're not going to allow, trust the agent to say that it was written and signed before me, then the rabbis, then we're going to create a situation of iguna, that the woman is going to be chained. And she's chained to a dead marriage. And so therefore the rabbis were lenient. And so therefore, and so therefore this is something that is going to, to motivate us. At the very beginning of our Masechta, we see that, yes, we, we want to make sure that get is done properly, but we're also going to in, introduce leniencies because of a very important principle. Mishum iguna ikua, uh, ikua be, ikua be rabbanam. Because if we're, if we're too strict, then this woman is going to be chained to this marriage. And so therefore that is the concept that the Gemara introduces on the very first staff of Masechah Skitin, Mishum Iguna Ikua Be Rabbanon. Okay, we'll stop the recording here. If anybody has any questions, happy.